Good afternoon and welcome to CEC Gurukul lecture in, in the series on Indian sociological tradition. I am going to talk today about an, a second sociologist and a very important uh, contributor to the discipline of sociology in India. And we are going to discuss D.P. Mukherjee. D.P. Mukherjee is one of the founding figures of Indian sociology in India and it is very important to understand his life, his work and some of the major concepts and theories which he has kind of contributed to the discipline of sociology of India. So, let us try to understand a very important uh, personality in sociology of India that is D.P. Mukherjee. D.P. Mukherjee's full name is Dhurujati Prasad Mukherjee and he is kind of considered as one of the founding fathers. Therefore, uh, rather in sociology, uh, uh, D.P. Mukherjee, R.K. Mukherjee and G.S. Gore are known as three trinity, trinity who were together kind of laying the foundation of sociology in India. Popularly, D.P. Mukherjee is known as D.P. Whenever we kind of refer to his work, it is used as D.P. And it is very important to understand the context in which Mukherjee was trying to contribute to the setting up of the discipline as well as trying to make sense of India as a society. So, he was in a circle of very good uh, academicians and scholars. And just to name some of his closest contemporary, we see Binoy Kumar Sarkar, who, uh, Radha Kamal Mukherjee, G.S. Gore, K.P. Chatobadhyaya. So, we see the circle uh, in which he was kind of living or the time in which he was a part of. He is kind of de depends on how much of discussions and discourses he had with his contemporary and played a very influential role in sociology of India. Dhirubhai Mukherjee was born on 5th October 1895. I am sorry, in 1894, in a middle class Bengali family. Rather, he was kind of uh, born into an intellectual family. He was surrounded by people who were into academics. He was uh, kind of since birth or uh, since very childhood uh, subject to discourse and discussions. He graduated from Calcutta University with subject of economics, history and political science. At that time, there was a uh, uh, kind of a mindset or there was an understanding that social science was kind of considered inferior to physical science. So, when DP actually wrote the entrance exam for the graduation, he kind of opt, uh, opted for social rather than physical sciences. And this was not the something which was in, uh, something acceptable because he was a, a bright student of his school days. And therefore, he kind of shifted from uh, physical pure science to social science. He graduated in economics, major in economics and after completing his masters in economics and history, he went to England for further studies. His friends were the most important aspects of his life. While he was growing up, while he was in his school, college and also as he was doing his uh, higher study, his responsiveness to the intellectual stimulus made his friendship an important element in the intellectual life of Bengal. His friend circle included Satyan Bose, Dilip Roy, Pramarth Chaudhary, Sudhin Chat, Meghan Saha, J.S. Ghosh, P.C. Mahalon Bose. If we are familiar with the literature or with the history of Bengal, we know that each of the name which is mentioned here have contributed significantly to the discourse and understanding to social reform, uh, trying to make sense of India which was undergoing large scale transformation. And also to keep in mind that there was already the presence of an orientalist discourse of understanding India in a western perspective. So, this kind of an indigenous or kind of understanding India from within or by Indian society was one of the most important aspect of D.P. Mukherjee. His encounter of the poor masses of the slum during the Swadeshi movement, he developed a keen interest in understanding the social life in him. This is also something which was very uh, uh, part of the time in which he was growing up. There was kind of nationalist movement, there was a, uh, the demand for using uh, products made within India and there was a kind of also a lot of social reform movements which were going around. So, D.P. Mukherjee was as an individual kind of very uh, disturbed by the masses of poverty and slum. 
but however he kind of was not very successful in it because he started the adult evening schools where he taught the poor students the students from the slums and wrote various economic texts and even monthly magazines so two things that he did widely when uh, even in his uh, early days was to make uh, writing a very important medium to uh, spread knowledge and also in his part time he used to teach poor children however he was accused of being a terrorist by the british and was arrested and all his adult schools were liquidated in 1915 he did not however deter from his work and he continued publishing and writing he published in sabuj patra and parichay and wrote not only on music literally tropics but also on democracy capitalism and anti intellectualism when we look into the wide range in which dp mukherjee wrote we see he was kind of a, 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 giving evidence of being a learned mind right right from music kind of providing us an understanding of what is music how music helps individual to make sense of their life to more contemporary problems of communal violence modernization and globalization he wrote extensively on all of these now let us look into his teaching career dp began his teaching career at bangabasi college calcutta In 1992 he joined the newly founded Lucknow University as a lecturer in economics and sociology and stayed there for 32 years. It's very important to kind of also bring in here that when we saw in GS Ghurya's discussion at the same time when Gates was setting up the department of sociology at the University of Bombay RK Mukherjee along with DP Mukherjee was establishing or laying the foundation of the department of sociology in Lucknow University then as as kind of uh, uh, already said that rk mukherjee dp mukherjee and gs ghore were the three trinity at lucknow university so dp mukherjee was offered or was invited to teach in lucknow university by rk mukherjee who was kind of considered as the first professor in the department and was responsible for the start of the department of sociology at lucknow dp mukherjee retired as a professor and the head of the department in 1954 he served as a visiting professor of sociology at the international institute of social studies the hague for a year after his retirement from the university of lucknow he was invited to the chair of economics at the university of Ali- aligarh he was the first president of indian sociological conference he also remained the vice president of the international sociological association he was kind of introduced to soci- uh, as already said that he did not graduate or complete his masters in sociology he was an economist by training but with the fact that he was a kind of uh, supportive of interdisciplinary approach to the study of uh, problem he was kind of uh, introduced to sociology via history and economics and he also had lot of interest in films music, music literary study so overall he had a kind of an holistic perspective he was not in support of compartmentalization that uh, uh, economic study only the economic aspect and sociology so he said there's lot of uh, 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 fact to be learned from by, through by taking it from the other disciplines you can sociologists can have a uh, learning from history by looking into the past as well as uh, economics kind of is embedded in understanding sociological institution and social system as we know that uh, dp mukherjee was a great teacher of his time he was kind of reputed in his not only in the teaching of sociology and economics but he was kind of acknowledged at a learn as a learned mind across india and abroad his hist- lectures on history of economics and social thought and on historical sociology were particularly appreciated during those days because it was a kind of a new perspective of understanding indian society because he was always kind of taking us back to the past he was kind of giving us lot of evidence lots of uh, 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 kind of going back to the glorious past and trying to make sense of indian society he was very critical of the way in which the western model of uh, understanding society was being appropriated in the social sciences and then therefore he kind of he advocates that the uh, sociologist have a huge task to play have a huge role to play in terms of g- making sense of india as a society from within the tradition from within the culture and the process of change that has been taking place 
So, he, as we know and as I have already said that he widely wrote, he was kind of a very uh, 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 writing since a very early days and therefore, he was able to kind of uh, emerge as a very learned scholar. When we look into him as a kind of a scholar, as a kind of an academician, uh, T. N. Madan in his essay has read kind of tell, tells us that there are two misconceptions about D. P. Mukherjee. The first is that midway in his intellectual uh, career, he became a Marxist. However, he was never able to master the theory and method of Marxism. Now, when we look into the work of D.P. Mukherjee, we will kind of uh, 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 come into an understanding that he kind of never uh, uh, took Karl Marx theory as it is. Rather, he kind of critically reviewed it and considered its significance to understand Indian society not uh, just by applying Marxist theory, but trying to make sense of his theory by putting it into the specific context and the social economic system of Indian society. The second misconception about DP is that he is kind of considered as a Hindu intellectual. So, uh, he is kind of many people say that since he was born into a Brahmin fa family and he was being brought uh, growing up in a um, uh, middle class Brahmin family, his he was a little conservative and also because he was trying to kind of uh, give too much of significance on tradition and going back to the past, people kind of misconceived him as kind of being a conservative intellectual. However, when we look into his work, we, uh, we will realize that he was not a conservative. He was talking about social change, he was talking about globalization, he was talking about modernization and rationalization, but not in the same manner in which the western scholars was doing it. He was giving us a very indigenous understanding of the process of social change. So, even when we look into him in terms of the misconception that he never applied Marxism, uh, D. P. Mukherjee himself says that he is uh, not a Marxist, he is a Marxologist. So, he will be kind of critiquing Karl Marx theory in specifically uh, in the context of society in India. So, when we look into how he approached Marxism or how he looked into uh, the theory of Karl Marx, uh, he became very uh, familiar to the work of Karl Marx very early in his life, but he was very critical of it. He was critical of the efficacy of the analysis of Indian social phenomena by the Marxist on three accounts. That is that he was uh, uh, as I have already said that he said that Karl Marx theory or Marxism could not uh, be applied as it is to understand Indian society. Why? There are three reasons. Number one, when we look into Marxism or when we look into Karl Marx theory, it is basically a theory of class and class conflict. But in India, and if we go back to the uh, past and in ancient India has been a land of kind of villages and agricultural structure where the class caste nexus is very important. So, caste conflict becomes very crucial in order to understand the social structure of India rather than going by the class dimension. So, that uh, if we kind of apply Karl Marx theory of class conflict as it is, it would become problematic. Second is that when we are more or less uh, kind of um, uh, when we look into Karl Marx, he was looking in uh, the structural changes which was happening in the western context. So, we cannot be ignorant of the socio-economic history of India as such. So, therefore, we need to kind of look into the history, try to understand the economic changes that was taking place and then kind of make sense of the uh, transformations which are taking place. The third uh, factor he said uh, for not kind of applying Marxism as it is was that most of the time we know that uh, Karl Marx uh, theory is from an economic perspective. He is kind of uh, looking into uh, historical change through economic uh, factor that is for Karl Marx it was the change in the economy that would kind of bring about change in the culture. But this is not kind of very uh, uh, appropriate for India because in appropriate uh, in India tradition, culture, social norms, values play very important part. So, we need to look into as economy as embedded in the culture and tradition of India then just rather than just looking at the economy uh, ir, uh, as separate from the culture and tradition. In a short paper entitled a word to Indian Marxist, 
included in his views and counter views, he warned that unhistorical minded young Marxist ran the risk of ending up as fascist and Marxist it itself could lose its effectiveness in a maze of slogan. He was very kind, kind, kind of cautious that we should not use Marxism, Marxism as a dogma. It is more in terms of uh, political ideology and cannot uh, we always be kind of over uh, uh, obsessed with it in terms of making uh, sense of the society which we are uh, seeing that it is con completely kind of uh, different from the western concept. So, we look into uh, of his some of his work which he kind of looks into uh, in order to make sense of what D.P. Mukherjee was offering to sociology. So, first is that his uh, uh, concern or his perspective on Marxism and we see that he is critical of it, he is not rejecting all of it, but he says that we need to apply it in a particular uh, indigenous manner. The second is in terms of understanding the nature of social sciences. DP stressed on interdisciplinary study of social system and institution. He was a economist by training. As I already said, he graduated in economics and history. However, he was aware of the limitation of economics as a discipline and he was kind of uh, very cautious and in terms of uh, applying me, uh, quantitative technique, mechanical technique and abstract generali generalization. So, he considered these as the limitation of economy as a discipline that there was kind of too much of generalization, there was too much of relying on the western model for understanding uh, society and therefore, the need to kind of uh, divert from economy to the uh, to sociology. So, also when we look into his understanding of sociology and history, he refused to relink sociology from history as from the method of history which is unavoidable in explaining social relations and transformation. So, he says that an historical understanding of Indian society is very, is very much required. Why? Because we cannot understand the present until and unless we go back to the past and make sense of it. Mukherjee stated that sociology studied group behavior and the interrelations. Sociology as a discipline has its own scope, which is not residual, but which cuts across the scope of other sciences. So, he was kind of very uh, 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 alert in terms of maintaining the uh, uh, borderline between history and sociology, but yet what his was his concern was to uh, develop a interdisciplinary study. So, they each of them has its own domain, it has its own subject to study, but then can gain from by looking into each other and therefore, in uh, analysis of D. P. Mukherjee, it has been uh, said by most scholars that he applied a historical method to understand society in India. So, the scope of sociology according to D. P. Mukherjee is the whole pattern and process of human group behavior. History rings the changes and sociology offers the unity and continuity. They are the purusha and the prakriti of the social sciences. So, uh, uh, two things which he uh, kind of uh, evident from when we look into the works of D. P. Mukherjee is one that he is an uh, uh, interdisciplinary trying to uh, take benefit from uh, uh, each other that is history kind of uh, being used by sociologists to uh, develop an understanding. And the second is in terms of kind of also going back to the uh, tradition and therefore, if in his work when we read his work there is lot of reference to te terms which is taken in from uh, myth mythology from classical text and therefore, uh, uh, he is making sense that we cannot understand society in India just by looking into the present, we need to go back to the past, we need to go back to the tradition to make sense of India. So, he had a very important uh, observation in terms of role of sociologist in India. To keep in mind, this is a time that sociology as a discipline is almost nurturing, its kind of uh, foundation is being laid. So, it was very important and it was very kind of critical to kind of have a, a framework or in term to understand what was the exact role uh, that the sociologist would have to do in Indian society. So, for D. P. Mukherjee, Indian sociologists should be rooted in living tradition. 
to get a better and more concrete sense of what this means. And this is very important when we look into the concept of tradition we will see that for DP Mukherjee tradition is living it is not something which is kind of uh, uh, in the past and uh, some modernity is in the present there is a kind of a continuity and we are living our tradition and it is very important to first of all figure out what the tradition is in order to kind of arrive at any kind of theory of society. The Indian sociologist can know better the following subject games played by children of your age group. So, uh, this is a, again a very important contribution because one on one side uh, from western uh, sociologists grand generalizations were coming, grand theories were coming, but here is a person who is trying to say that we can understand a society by looking into everyday phenomena, by looking into festival, by looking into the music, by looking into games and that is how uh, all these games, music, festival makes a uh, tradition. So, it is very important to kind of be rooted in the tradition in order to uh, understand society in India. First duty of Indian sociologist is to study and to know the social traditions of India. For Mukherjee, this study of tradition was not oriented only towards the past, but also included sensitivity to change. So, it is not that he is just saying that just study, understand the past and it is complete. It is important to understand the past and what factors kind of contributes to the changing of past. Why do we give up certain practices? Why are certain traditions being considered as something which is not part of India? Why is it kind of uh, 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 diminishing? So, it is very important to understand the continuity from past to present present. Need to share in the folkways to mores, customs and traditions for the purpose of understanding social system. So, the core of the social system of India could be understood by looking into folk works, mythology, uh, looking into songs, musics and so on and so forth. Now, let us look into some of his important publication. D.P. Mukherjee wrote around 19 books including Diversities which was published in 1958. He wrote 10 books in Bengali and 9 in English. He early his publication included Basic Concepts in Sociology 1932 and Personality and the Social Science 1924. Some of the other publications are Modern Indian Culture published in 1942 and republished in 1948. Uh, Problems of India which was published again in 1942 and Views and Counter Views in 1946. Modern Indian culture and diversities are known as his best work. His veracity can be seen from his other contribution such as Tagore, a study which was published in 1943 on Indian history, a study in method and introduction to music 1945. Apart from these, he also in enjoyed a unique place in Bengali literature as a novelist, essayist and literary critic. So, he was not only providing academic discourse and academic uh, books, but he was also at the same time enjoying literary uh, uh, writings and being part of the Bengali uh, literary culture. If we look into some of his important book, uh, he considered his first two book that is personality and the social sciences and the basic concepts in sociology as personal documents. He considered them as very important these two texts was kind of uh, very uh, close to D.P. Mukherjee because he was uh, uh, giving us the formula or he was giving us the framework of what uh, should be the core content of social science and therefore his work is kind of considered as uh, contributing to the foundation of the discipline of sociology in India. The former he said was written with the sole purpose of clarifying his attitude towards systemite knowledge of society and life in general. The next book was Modern Indian Culture. The book was published in 1942 and it was written under the impending shadow of partition of India, inquiry and anguish. The problem as he saw was first to explain why the calamity of communal division had been fallen in India and then to use his knowledge to shape a better future. 
So, he was not only kind of giving us concepts in sociology, making sense of music and folk way, he was also looking into some something which is kind of considered as more serious discourse that is how partition of India kind of created communal violence, how the life social economic life in India was disturbed by the partition and also kind of give us a way forward that how to shape a better India. Uh, so, when we look into his other work, his other works will, will be including his work on modernization, on middle class, his uh, understanding of personality. So, he has given us a wide range of uh, text and work to make sense of society in India. Uh, thank you.